Hello and welcome back to Insanely Creating. It's been a while. Um, this was not intentional. I wasn't planning on having a break. I just ended up enjoying the sunshine. So anyway, uh, let's get on with today's video. Yes, I know I'm late to the party, but today we are doing the Barbie doll video. Those of you who were also 90s children may recognise this as the hula hair Barbie. Um, oh, well, this poor hula Barbie has had the most horrific haircut, but we will um, we'll fix her. Uh, she isn't my hula Barbie from my childhood. I couldn't actually find my original. It's somewhere in the depths of my father's uh, garage or in the attic or something so I found this one on a second hand site so we're going to go ahead and get her all prepped and ready to customise first thing is obviously cutting away all of the hair but to remove the hair plugs I'm actually going to cut into the head I decided not to remove uh, the doll head simply because I wasn't confident that I knew how um, I had never customised a Barbie doll again and spoiler alert I probably won't ever do another one I definitely prefer the Monster High dolls and other dolls that have got much bigger faces I think that might have contributed to why this video has taken so long I am in full Halloween mode at the moment um, in my house and in my work everything is very Halloween-y at the moment so I, it pains me to put out a Barbie video in October but I have to get this doll out before I get anything else out because <laughs> otherwise I'll end up just never putting this video out so I'm really sorry that it's not Halloween but please just enjoy this moment of pink and fluff before uh, we get into our proper Halloween-y bits which I'm really excited for because I am a huge fan of Halloween. Now, like I said, I was not going to attempt to try and take off this head because I really didn't want to risk breaking any neck pegs or anything, whatever it is that's going on in there. So we're going to just slice the back of the head open and have a little look at the plugs. And this was the first time I had ever seen uh, a reroute that had been uh, threaded like this. I remember Delightful did a video ages ago explaining how doll makers or manufacturers would actually do this technique um, but this is the first time I've ever actually seen it done so it took ages trying to pull all that out it was an absolute pain in the backside um, but we got there eventually and I removed the earrings from the inside as well because they were a bit tricky to try and pull out from the outside they were really stuck in there next is the face up and with a simple putting on of a pair of gloves Now that both gloves have been put on accurately and efficiently, I can go ahead and remove her face with 100% acetone. Next, I need to prep the body. I do this using sandpaper. I go over the entire body. It gets rid of all that shininess, but it will leave little particles everywhere. So then I wipe it all over with acetone-free nail polish and then give it a coat of Mr. Super Clear Matte Sealant and it gives it this lovely matte skin texture. So then we can get straight into the blushing. So I'm going to use soft pastels to blush the body and the face and then I will go in with my watercolour pencils to put details on the face. Of course, as usual, I started off by sketching out the eye size that I was after, like the general shape, but I did this a few times before I realised I just was not happy with the doll um, face shape here. So I ended up getting my Dremel and sanding off her eyelids. Now, 
With this particular tip that I've used, I don't know if I'm meant to, but I found that it just came out a lot smoother and easier if I kept the doll's face wet, or at least a little bit moist while doing it. Ugh, the word moist is gross. Anyway, I sanded it down as much as I wanted to, and I just ended up with a much smoother, flatter canvas than I had, because the eyelids were quite sharp and really there. Um, but once I did that, I couldn't stop and I ended up cutting out her teeth because I wanted to give her a closed uh, smile. Closed mouth smile, yeah. So I went in there with my Stanley knife, tried to cut out her teeth as evenly as I could, but there were obviously little bits of plastic and stuff all left in there. So I tried to smooth it out and make sure there were no ridges. And then I just went ahead and super glued her mouth shut. I actually wrapped an elastic band around her head to try and keep her mouth closed for as long as possible. I decided to leave her overnight so that I knew that the mouth was completely dry and it wasn't going to suddenly pop open in a freaky manner. Um, so then I went in and re-sketched the eyes in a shape that I much preferred and then shaded and started adding some colour. Now right at this moment, while I'm doing the voiceover and the editing for this video, I should be making my Halloween doll, but I haven't even started yet. In fact, I don't even know what I'm going to make. So why don't we put a comment at the bottom of this video and see if any of you guys can guess what I end up doing for my Halloween doll, because hopefully by the time this video comes out, I have actually started. So let's see if one of you guys can get it. But speaking of leaving comments on videos, any interaction that I get from you guys really helps with that dreaded YouTube algorithm. So anything that you see that you like, please give it a good old thumbs up, a little comment and share it with anyone that you think that would also enjoy it would really, really help. It means that the YouTube algorithm knows that it's enjoyable content and that people want to see it and it'll share it with more people. And it's free for you guys to do, so it's just a win-win situation. Okay, but back to this doll. So I've gone ahead, I've done the eye shape that I wanted, which is a little bit more of a sultry look, I feel, compared to what I've done before. And then I've just added some nice little cute blush across her face and across her nose. And we're going for a nice subtle pink lip as well. I also go ahead and add blush to the rest of the body on the joints and other areas that I feel would probably benefit from having a bit more of a pinky tint to them. Now I went ahead and made this whole doll before I'd even seen the movie. All I'd seen was the trailers. So now that the movie has been out and I think most people have now seen it that want to see it. So what did you guys think? Tell me down below, what did you think of the movie? How did it play out for you? I'm also getting into the habit now of adding my name on the back of the head of each of my dolls as well as the number of what doll it is that I've made and this doll is number 11. Now just adding a little bit more shading onto the eyes. I like to put this blue into the corners of the eyes because I'm a tired person and the corner of my eyes is quite often shaded in like a bluey purple. So my dolls are getting it too. They can be just as tired as I am. Now, for her outfit, I was really lucky enough to find at a local craft fair some fabric that was pink gingham, and the gingham was quite small pattern, so it was perfect for doll size clothing. So this Barbie is gonna get some cute little pink gingham dungarees. So I start off by putting the doll onto the paper, and then I'm gonna just do a quick sketch around her so that I've got an idea of what size and height I need to do. And then I will sketch out the general shape that I want to do for the dungarees. Obviously giving a little bit of extra room so that they're not too tight. I decided to give 
two big scooping pockets on either side at the front and I know here that I drew some pockets but once I made them I decided I really didn't want to keep adding on bits because with the pattern that I'd already used it was looking quite busy anyway so I didn't want to add anything more to make it a bit too much. But here's the fabric that I found. Isn't it perfect? It's so gorgeous. So we're going to go ahead, cut out all the pieces and I'll sew them all together. So this is the big front panel main piece and then I will have two little side pocket pieces going on there as well to complete the whole front. But I noticed that the edges are starting to fray a little bit so I'm going to go ahead, get in there with my Yoohoo glue, just go around all of the edges and fold them over tiniest little bit, just one or two millimetres, just so that it's got a much better finished look to it. Once they were all glued down, I did just whiz round the edges with my sewing machine just so that I could make it look like everything had been sewn down instead of all glued. This to me just gives it a little bit more of a polished look than it otherwise would have. Now I keep finding little silicon moulds all over the place whenever I go to secondhand shops so I keep picking them up. So I've decided to use this one to make a really funky pair of flower power sunglasses. I'm using the UV resin that I got in my Nerdy Crafter Not Another Crap Kit box as well as the colours that she also provided to colour the resin. I have both of Nerdy Crafters boxes, but this particular pink colour came from the first box. I used UV resin to attach the jewellery wire to create frames for our glasses. Just have a quick sneak peek of how these are looking so far and yes, love them! Okay, so I also want to give her a hat. Now I wanted to make a bucket hat but I've got plans for one of my other dolls when it comes to a bucket hat so I've decided to do a hat like this. I don't know what it's called though but it's like the ones from the 90s that like, Blossom used to wear. If you know what that hat is called pop it in the comments down below because I, I, it's bugging me that I don't know. But I've got the foam clay out and this is air dry clay that's sort of much more foamy, that's why it's called foam clay. Um, but I'm going to use this to make some platform flip flops. Now again this is taken from my own childhood inspiration as I was that kid that actually owned pink foamy platform flip flops. Yes, I was very cool. Now my Barbie is dressed in pink and I know normally Barbies are blonde but my Barbie is getting pink hair to match her pink outfit because we are just going full on pink. So I created some wefts using yarn and I went ahead and glued them onto her head. Now I normally use hot glue to attach my wefts but I thought I'd have a go at using Yoohoo glue in the hope that it would not make the head and the scalp so bulky but I've got to admit I really didn't like the way that the top of the head turned out in this case so in the future I think I will be going back to my hot glue method. It is always good to try out different methods because you just don't know what will end up working and you might end up finding something that works out better. In this case, it did not. Now with a little bit of heat and a metal chopstick, I had a go at styling her fringe. Is it perfect? No, but will it do? Yes. Now, just in case, I've actually decided to make her two little hair clips that I will use to pin back her fringe on either side of her temples. So to do this, I've got my two pins, I'm going to cut off the top of it, and then I'm going to use one of my tools to fold it at a right angle. And then I just stab that into the head, keeping the hair pinned back in place. 
I will then cover up the pin with a little strawberry shaped nail charm. Now to get the flip flops looking like flip flops, normally you have the uh, string or the strappy bit going in between your big toe and your next toe. So to get that look on a Barbie doll, I will drill through her foot and then put the string through that hole. This will mean that the shoes will be permanently attached to her feet, but I don't mind that. She's not meant to be undressed. So once the threads have been threaded through her feet and then wrapped around the sides, I stick them down to the bottom of her feet. This will then be covered up with the foamy soles that we made earlier. So going under her dungarees is going to be a cute little white t-shirt. So I'm using my Posca marker in pink, just going around all the edges just to give it a nice fun edging. And I want to add a fun little cute simple motif to the front of the t-shirt so I just went with a little pink daisy. And a little pop of colour on her nails and that is the last bit of this doll finish. So let's dress her up, let's get her all put together, all of the accessories on and see how she turned out. Thank you to every single one of you for sticking through this video and watching all the way to the end. Also a huge thank you if you are already a subscriber because you guys keep me going and make it possible for me keep to keep making arty things. So if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. But if you ended up loving it, please consider subscribing. And if you could also leave a little comment and share it with anyone you think would love this, then it really helps with that dreaded YouTube algorithm. This doll will be going up for sale soon, so please keep an eye out on my Etsy shop for more information. But that's it from me for now, and until next time, bye bye